So this is page 25 in your note packet. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. We'll see. I'm not, I'm not too wound up about it either way. So, we'll just <coughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Um, how did you get, what was the number today at the 98.0 for the 801 mole? Mm -hmm. how, I know when Kathleen got like 98.076, I forgot how to uh, okay. do so the calculation. Okay, so calculate the molar mass. Uh, so the 98.0 is the number of mole that you're going to get at the You're, you're talking about oh, number. I'm sorry, number three, number three on the top. Number three on the top. Oh, no, this one. Or number two on the top. Sorry. Oh, no. <coughs> how you put ninety-eight point zero three? How did you get that third? Oh, I think it should be an eight. Is that what you got? Yeah. That's, okay. I wasn't quite sure. <laughs> So then down here it should be. Yeah, I'm sorry, thank you. So the answer comes out to be, yeah. So does that, that make you, that's what yeah, you got now. Okay, you. no, thank you for asking. Other questions on page 25? Okay, so I have everybody's quiz. Yeah. So this is page 18 in your note packet. That's the one that I, I wanted you to practice. And then there's another 19. Um, so hopefully I have every mistake corrected. By E. No, that's not E. We are <coughs> I'm trying to help you. Uh, now, when it says IUPAC name, technically for um, the ionic compounds, ionic or IUPAC means the Roman numeral. But I accept, you know, I put the common as well because a lot of students, some students really tend to like the common. So if that's how you are, I, on the exams, I will accept either IUPAC or common. 
And if you have any questions about these, ask away. And so, covalent, we don't simplify. That's but right. Ionic, it could be simplified. Like That's right. So, covalent, uh, you do not simplify at all. Um, You know, and, and you have to be careful with some ionic compounds, like this ammonium sulfate. You might think, oh, I can simplify that. Um, but you would have to have that 4 outside of the parentheses, since it's, it would be changing the ion. It would, be, it, it would no longer be sulfate if you simplify that one. So that's a one area where I encourage you to be cautious, you know, because sometimes you, you get into the simplification mode and I know that's ionic, I'm going to simplify. Any questions on these? You can find these online. The answers are within the lectures, um, too. If you're, you know, furiously copying these down, you know, hold off on it, and then you can check them online. Um, this one I'd like to point out, too, SO3. There is no charge on this one. So a lot of times students think that's sulfite ion. It's not sulfite ion because it doesn't have that charge. So it's covalent, it's sulfur trioxide. And that's kind of the same for like any insanity that we have, like if there's no like there's no charge on it, then just right. assume that it's covalent. So I'm going to go on to the next page. I'll have these, um, I'll project them when we're on our breaks too. So, you know, if you still have ones to copy down or you can find them online. Uh, so this is page 19. really particular about spelling because, you know, as long as I can tell what you're trying to communicate, you know, then this is a definitely a strange name. So I'll slide this up. I know some of you are still copying, but again, I'll project them on break, and you can find them online. So we're going to continue on in Unit 2. Uh, We learned how to convert grams to moles and moles to grams in our last lecture. So now we're going um, to deal with chemical equations, balancing them, uh, making sure that what's on the left is equal to the right. So it's kind of like what we saw in Unit 1 with nuclear chemistry. You need to make sure that you can kind of think of this arrow as an equal sign. So here, this sentence is describing a chemical reaction. 
Sodium bicarbonate is heated, which produces sodium carbonate, water, and carbon dioxide. Now you guys know your nomenclature well enough now that you can write the formulas for this and you can write the chemical equation for this. So how would you write the formula for sodium bicarbonate? So sodium is Na, and that's plus, and then bicarbonate is Does that make a difference when the light's on or off? No? Okay. Um, and then bicarbonate is what? So the formula for this would be just NaHCO3. What about sodium carbonate? So Na2CO3. Water, H2O, carbon dioxide, Good. <coughs> so just like in unit one, where we had our nuclear chemistry, the reactants are on the left side and the products are on the right side. And like I mentioned before, you can think of this arrow as an equal sign. So when you look back to this sentence that's describing this chemical reaction, sodium bicarbonate is heated, heated which produces sodium carbonate water and carbon dioxide. So which produces anything after that is going to be your product. So sodium carbonate, water, and carbon dioxide will be your product. So I'm going to highlight your products. And those are going to be on the right side of the arrow. Love how everybody's got their own letters. Such a good class. Um, so then that only leaves one thing that's going to be our reactant. So that's the sodium bicarbonate. So sodium bicarbonate is heated, which produces, so now you're going to have your arrow. Now in chemistry, uh, the symbol for heat is a triangle above your arrow. It's not essential that you know that, but you know if you ever see see a reaction and you say, what is that triangle? It stands for heat. Or maybe you'll be on Jeopardy one day. <laughs> so then what's on the right side of the arrow? Na2CO3, water, and carbon dioxide. Now, I'm, I bet some of you are already picking up on this, that if you look, the left and the right, you'll see that this is not balanced. And remember that the arrow is an equal sign. So we're going to learn how to balance these reactions. So I'm going to put an asterisk by this one. We're just going to leave it unbalanced. We'll fix it in a little bit. Um, for right now, what I want you to do is to practice writing chemical equations from sentences. So, um, like this first one, plumbus sulfide plus gaseous oxygen yields, that's another word for arrow, so when you see that, okay, I need to have my arrow, yields solid plumbus oxide plus gaseous sulfur dioxide. When you see oxygen, fluorine, hydrogen, bromine, when they're just named like that, those are your Hoff wrinkles, those are your diatomic elements. So your Hoff wrinkles, so when you write this equation, you have your arrow, 
this is going to be O2, not just O for oxygen. So because it's a diatomic, it naturally occurs. Now if it was something like sodium oxide, it would not be a diatomic. But if it's just oxygen, fluorine, hydrogen, any of your Hofbrinkles, then you write them diatomic. Right. That's how they are. So I want you to write these equations now. And if you cannot get started whatsoever, start with your arrow. That gets you a long way. A few things I've seen walking around. Remember that uh, the main group elements, they always have the same charge. So like group one will always be plus one, group two, plus two. Your transition metals are the ones that vary. And that's why you look at those little numbers above. Um, group five minus three, group six minus two, group seven minus one. Group six and seven, if you look at those little numbers above, like for bromine, you think, what, what charge do I use? I have no idea what I'm looking at. But bromide will always be minus 1. So uh, just remember that. And then you only look at those numbers for the transition levels. Um, other little things. Uh, After a while, you will get to the point where you can see a name and not have to do the cross and drop. And uh, it takes a while, but once you get there, you know it, and you're pretty good. But in the beginning, keep doing the cross and drop. So plumbus is PB2, sulfide minus 2, so that's going to be PBS. Um, and at this point, you know, this sentence... Plumbus sulfide plus gaseous oxygen. Um, when we get into lab nine, you will learn state symbols, but it's not essential for the lecture portion of this course. Um, so you don't, you could see like this. That, that yeah. means gas, but um, that's all it means. So you'll see state symbols sometimes S, S for solid, L for liquid. G for gas, <coughs> AQ for aqueous. But don't let it throw you off. That It's still just a chemical equation. And I'll talk about this more in lab. So, um, okay. Plumbus oxide. So that's PBO. And see it says solid. So that would be an S. Gaseous sulfur dioxide. What's the formula for sulfur dioxide? SO2. Yes, so you can see that, but it, you're not at all required to have that. I just wanted to show you what it's like so that when you see it, you're like, oh my gosh, is this something else I have to balance or deal with? No. So you would put solid for the first one? Yeah, it, it wasn't explicitly stated, but yeah. Definitely. Oh, we don't have to remember that. Have to that. Right. Yeah. Okay, and then... Lead to nitrate, that's PB plus 2, and that's PA minus 1. Plus potassium iodide, potassium iodide minus 1. So, okay, I yields lead to iodide. plus potassium nitrate. <coughs> so you might notice you know, these equations, 
the iodide, for instance, is now balanced. You have one on the left, two on the right. Um, and this top equation, your oxygen, you have two oxygens on the left and one plus two, three on the right. So that brings us to the law of conservation of mass, which is on the next page. And the law of conservation of mass is that mass is neither created nor destroyed. So, on page 25, we already know that the equations aren't correct. Um, there are problems. So, in terms of our chemical equations, the law of conservation of mass is that your atoms on the left have to equal your atoms on the right. So if you look at this first equation, the sodium bicarbonate, this is the one that was heated and um, when it decomposed it produced sodium carbonate, water, and carbon dioxide. So if you kind of create a tally sheet um, in the beginning with balancing equations, it's easier. Um, when you first start these, you're looking back and forth. How does she know that it's off? So, you know, this is the left, and this is the right. So, on the left, how many sodium atoms do I have? One. On the right, how many sodium atoms do I have? Two. Two. How many hydrogens do I have on the left? One. How many hydrogens do I have on the right? Two. Good. Carbons on the left. One. Carbons on the right. Two. There's a carbon here and a carbon here. That means two. Oxygens on the left. Three. Oxygens on the right. Three, four, six. So if you think about this mathematically, one times what will give you two? Two. One times two again. One times two will give you two. One times, or three times two will give you six. So what I'm doing is effectively multiplying sodium bicarbonate by two. So I'm putting a coefficient in front of sodium bicarbonate. When I put a coefficient of 2 in front of sodium bicarbonate, it multiplies the sodium, the hydrogen, the carbon, and the oxygen. So that's how we've got a balanced chemical equation now. So the law of conservation of mass, we are obeying that law now. Uh, the only way to balance equations is by changing the coefficients in front of the formulas. Sometimes students want to change the actual formulas in order to get everything to balance. Do not do that. Do not do that whatsoever. It will cause major troubles. You're, you're doing your own chemistry. You know? um, so when you're balancing chemical equations, you change the coefficients in front. So this is what is eligible. Now, the coefficients in front of sodium carbonate, water, and carbon dioxide, they're already balanced. You can leave them blank, or you can put a 1. So if you're reading, you know, if I was reading the answers to you, I'd say, you know, from left to right, the coefficients are 2, 1, 1, 1. Um, or you can leave them blank. What you absolutely do not want to do is to put a 0 in front of sodium carbonate, or water, or carbon dioxide, because that means... They're not in the reaction anymore. It's like anytime you multiply something by zero, what do you get? Zero. So then your equation wouldn't be balanced again. 